Hello, this is Howard Lease on stage at Rating the Rock Vault here in Las Vegas. And we're going to talk today a little bit about the gear because I know you gear hounds want to know all about this stuff. So we'll start with the number one guitar. This is the White Tiger. I got this about a year ago. It's a private stock PRS guitar with a crazy black and white flamey top, rosewood neck, ebony fingerboard with the rare Celtic crosses. Um, my tech Keith Marks calls this a desert island guitar. If you could only have one, this would be a candidate for that. It does just about everything. It's a beautiful sounding instrument and uh, I play it with pride. Here's some of the sounds we get. For clean, I use a little bit of chorus, a little bit of delay and you get that. Then with a flip of a switch, you get the heavy rock tone. I played that song on this guitar at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame when I was inducted last year. Crazy on you. Another interesting tone we have is the golden cello. That's a combination fuzz tone and delay. So I'm on my clean channel, but with that on, it gets you get that. I use it for. woman. Now the only other thing I have on here is a booster pedal. It goes from heavy to really heavy. Yeah, so I can go from super clean to really heavy and dirty with just a couple of switches. A little delay. So this is my delay pedal, it stores three different delays. And this is a chorus pedal, it gives you that swirly sound. That's straight, swirly. It also knocks my guitar into stereo, which is nice. Next thing I showed you was the cello. delay and fuzz. Over here are the channel switchers. Goes from clean to not so clean. Those are both dirty now. And then when I solo, I hit the booster. Go out 
have a bike come back is still sustaining. This is the second guitar I use in the show. This is a custom 24. Like the White Tiger, it has 24 frets, which I like. I can get up to the really high notes. This one has a five-way switch, which gives me some of those in-between Stratocaster kind of sounding clean tones. I use this for Hotel California and a bunch of other songs that have really nice clean parts on it. It's uh, the rare Bonnie Pink. My daughter's name is Bonnie. She has the second Bonnie Pink ever made, but the original one went to a woman named Bonnie Lloyd, who worked for Paul Reed Smith. This is a custom back plates that I put on. It's not a private stock, but it's pretty close. It's a really beautiful guitar. Ivory tuners, ivory truss rod cover. I change all my guitars. I put a old Fender amp knobs, because I find they're the easiest to just move with just my finger. That is my real fingernail, by the way. And uh, I use, you can see I, use, I have long nails. I use my nails as picks. So this is a great all-around guitar. I call it shortcake. Keith calls it pinky. So, and what? today we have green strings on there, green DR strings, which we use uh, the neon strings on all the guitars. So I never know what color my strings are gonna be till I come out on stage. And Keith is fanatical about changing the strings and keeping fresh strings. He just likes the tone of the fresh strings. I wouldn't change them as much myself, but I'm glad he does, because they do sound fantastic. So that's the second guitar we use. This guitar is called Mina, for Mina Harker in the Dracula book, because it's blood red. Uh, I really like this guitar. It's got three soap bars in it, so it's a little bit different sounding, single coils. But again, it's got that five-way switch so I can get the in-between sounds. And in fact, I use this one on the Hendrix all along the watchtower. Uh, number one, because it sounds much like a Strat. And number two, it's tuned down to E flat, because Jimmy played Watchtower, which is in C. He played it in C sharp, tuned down a half step. So I like to keep it the same way. It's got a maple neck instead of mahogany, which is different. And uh, this, this sees action on uh, a couple of songs, songs that are tuned down to E flat. This is my main drop half step guitar. All right, I dig this guitar. I just got this guitar for this year. This is called Bane. Um, a PRS guy did built this guitar out of a PRS guitar. He put the crazy uh, metal top on it. We're using DR strings where every string's a different color and that's actually fantastic for seeing what string you're on. Um, the knobs are old dimes that have been crushed into shape to become knobs. And we use this in the 80s because uh, this is a Seymour Duncan pickup, not a PRS pickup, and it's got that big, heavy 80s tone. It only does one thing, but it does it really good. It's a nice hot pickup and kind of a crazy looking guitar. Not a stock, off the shelf guitar. And I, I paid nothing for this. So it's kind of great to have, you know, $400 guitars and $10,000 guitars in the same show. But this thing sounds good, and it's a uh, bulletproof. It'd probably stop at 38. <laughs> All right, this guitar is really, really pretty. This is a private stock guitar as well. Um, this is also fairly recent. It's got a crazy quilted top, gold parts. The binding on the side of the neck is wood rather than plastic. Private stock eagle on the top, those tuners are ebony. The neck is exotic rosewood. There's Paul Smith's signature on there. And we have custom back plates that match the top. This is one of the $10,000 variety I was speaking of earlier. This is an expensive guitar. <clears throat> and Keith just pointed out that we just we put a nick in it. And so, you know, it's going to happen if you use them in battle. But I'd rather use them and get a couple of nicks than not have them sit in the closet at home, you know. It's my privilege to play an instrument this fine because I play at this level. And so I'm going to use it. And if it gets a nick in it, so be it. That's the way it is. 
but that's a that's a pretty one all right and the last one I'm using right now I change these guitars out very often but we use six in the show I just got this one a couple weeks ago from a friend of mine in Indiana I had a green one that I got from him that I used for a couple years with bad company and uh, then we just traded he wanted the green one back and I took this one it's a cherry sunburst with what's known as boat wake quilt looks like a boat has gone this way and is leaving a wake this isn't private stock but it's a nice pretty guitar it's a very hot pickup so we use this at the end of the night for the loudest and rudest guitar tones so I started the show with more uh, 50s level pickups to be more period correct with the 60s and 70s and as the time goes by pickups got hotter so that's what I do I trade guitars and get them hotter this one again has the raw rosewood neck which I like no varnish or shellac on that it's just raw wood and there's something about the sound of rosewood this one has a whammy bar on it and coil tapping so I can go get half the pickup or both you know both halves so it gives you a variety of clean to dirty sounds pretty easy to get and it's a cool color pretty color so this is the one I close the show with the last the last one I play picks I use are carbon fiber they have a pot plant on them and they're extremely stiff and hard but thin so it's thin like a thin pick but hard to bend like a heavy pick like a little scalpel best picks I ever saw and so that's how I do it. I change all the truss rod covers. We always put custom truss rod covers on everything because I like them that way. And it's a big show. We're in a show. So people comment every single night about all the guitars, all the PRSs. They go, oh my God, you're killing me with <laughs> PRSs one after another, each one deadlier than the one before. So. And this is Flip Flop. That's named after this paint job. I don't know if you can catch it <clears throat> but it changes from purple to blue to green it's show car paint hot rod paint and they painted uh, 10 guitars like this many years ago and auctioned them off for charity and I somehow got a hold of one of them and and from my angle when I'm playing it it's gold so this is a really crazy paint job and this is one of my favorite guitars uh, this has been on hundreds of Paul Rogers shows I've used this like crazy over the years it's one of my most dependable road dogs, and uh, right now it's doing uh, duty as an E-flat backup guitar. And those again are the dimes, dimes made of dimes. And just a great guitar under the lights, and a real dependable, stays in tune, no issues guitar. And I've had this for. 15 years or so maybe. Play this play this a lot. Flip flop. This is my amp rig here at the Rock Vault. Um, they're all Marshall amps and they're white because I like white amps. So I have six stacks of red but I have a number of white amps. I didn't have enough room to bring all the red stuff so I brought the white stuff and uh, these are fantastic amps. The ones I'm using mainly is this one and this one, they're a 100 watt DSL JCM 2000s. DSL stands for dual super lead. And these are uh, modified with high end transformers from Mercury Magnetics. So they're 100 watts, but they're running each about 150 watts. They're, they're pumped up a little bit. And I'm running them like I would at a real rock show. So that's why I have this plexiglass screen, because if I didn't have the screen, I'd be sterilizing the people in the first couple of rows. So we put this plexi screen on there so I can play them nice and loud, get the sound I like. Um, these are my microphones. Bob Heil makes these microphones for us. And uh, there's, there's nothing better. I think they're the best sounding mics. So 200 watts, cranked up pretty good. The rest of it's for spares. And we do this five shows a week. And we've been going for, you know, we're getting quite close to 250 shows, 300 shows. So these are dependable. And uh, 
you got to walk on stage and not have any worries in your mind about all I want to worry about is playing properly. I don't have to want to worry about the gear. So you get the stuff that's bulletproof, rock solid, and go out there and not just think about the music. <laughs>